Let's is our producer. Hello. <laughs> Good evening, all. Welcome once again uh, to XR Confidential number 78. And tonight we have with us once again Nathan Blackwell of Voyage Trekkers fame. Nathan, how are you? Good. How you do? How you doing? Thanks for having me on. Oh, yeah. Hey, our pleasure. Our, our pleasure. Um, yeah, this is just a, a – uh, we talked about it because uh, I wanted to get you back on. Um, and you've got a new little film that we're going to watch. So, yeah. So you we can. shot, yeah, we shot it just pre-COVID. So and oh, okay. you can't see right here, but my cat is trying to find a space on my desk, and I'm discouraging her. There we go. <laughs> I've got my, I've got Pee Wee, my little puppy. Uh huh. Yeah, just off screen. Our off screen buddies. Um, yeah. So um, uh, we the uh, some of the you may see some familiar people if you're familiar with uh, Voyage Trekkers, but we did a short film. Um, basically a couple weeks before, uh, the lockdown, um, and, uh, it has some of the same people involved, but it's very much kind of in the same, uh, sci-fi comedy vein of, uh, Voyage Trekkers. I got, you know what? I just realized I need to, oh, I need to, wow, right. That's what it is. I need to plug in my... USB here. There we go. Okay. I'm wondering why are we using that camera and not that camera? Uh, I was like, there we go. Okay. Let me just change my camera. Oh, that sounds much better. Uh, there, yeah. I, 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 there's so much. Oh, God. It's just so much is going on on this end. It's crazy, but all good. All good. We're looking forward to our little move. Although we close on the 28th on this house, the one we're selling. But mm. we're not closing on the one that Crystal is buying. That's our first house for mm. probably a week or so after that. So we've got a week of being homeless, which basically oh, means, and basically uh. means move into a hotel with four four dogs for a week. Uh. <laughs> like she's like, oh, the Hampton Inn's got good. I said, that's a hotel. We need suites. We need like the you know <laughs> the, the the residence in that'll be, be a, mm -hmm. a more room for us. So we'll yeah. probably get and we're probably getting two rooms because I'm sure they don't allow four dogs in one room. So even though they're pet friendly, so we're probably getting two rooms and and uh, taking Jeez. care. Of. So it's kind of funny because it's like, wow, we're like literally homeless for. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my brother is actually going through the same thing. Him and his wife. Um, they just had a pipe burst in their house. Oh, and, and it, tur it turns out it was just like the tip of the iceberg. There was a whole bunch of other, um, like water related issues. And so, yeah, they're, they're in Airbnb this week. Oh, it's a pain in the neck. It, it is a pain in the <sighs> neck, but you know, it's all good. We're, our goal is we're moving because we want to, um, we want to move to the area where we're going to be buying some land and building the studio. We're going to actually build oh, right on. So um, and that's kind of this is step number one. So uh, Crystal's buying a house, and then I'm buying a house, and then um, and then we're buying some land to build a studio. So wow, uh, it should be it should it should be good. So uh, awesome. All, all good. Okay, so tell us about um, tell us about. Uh, I'm gonna put it up here real. Uh, well, I don't have it. I'm gonna gonna upload your the the photo you sent me. Um, tell us about your new project because it sounds like a lot of fun and uh, sounds very much in the vein of, of what. Uh, <laughs> so it, yeah, read it. It's a it's an idea I've been kicking around a lot uh, for a while, and it, it's in part like 
you know, I, I want to do sci-fi. I, I want to do like big ep epic stories, but we don't have big epic budgets. So I, I've been trying to like figure out, like, how, well, how can we make our budget work with our ideas? And then it just the, 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 the comedy of that intersecting with just living in the kind of like um, sci-fi web series, Kickstarter, Indiegogo kind of world. We came up with an idea of, of these other filmmakers making a movie that's this huge epic sci-fi. It's like a it's like a twelve part series, um, and their their Kickstarter was co a complete failure, but they're putting out the episode anyway. So it's basically zero finished effects, and so that's really the gag is a, a sci-fi movie with all the effects out of it, um, and so it, it becomes kind of a, a love letter to. The, the struggle of of independent filmmakers in the sci-fi space so gotcha gotcha okay uh, and uh, here we're gonna we'll show real quick we'll show the 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 header image for it here you go this is uh it's star saga and right <laughs> meant to be a bit generic right exactly well they, <laughs> we're still, okay well and how long is this because we're gonna watch it's, pr it. it's pretty it's short it's 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 only five minutes five right. minutes 13 seconds. By the way, Squishy Studios is a great name. Oh, thanks. That is, I've... Oh, 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 I was, I was, that, that is yeah, I'm really, uh, I was like, Squishy Studios. Oh, man, we take ourselves way too seriously. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, sometimes I feel like it, um, uh, that it was a little too silly, and sometimes I'm glad to, to be in the silly camp. So Yeah, no, it's great. Okay. Here we go. So everyone, we're going to watch Star Saga, which is the short film sci-fi comedy, the latest from Nathan Blackwell of Voyage Trekkers. Um, and uh, enable audio. Here we go. And... <laughs> <laughs> Get off my tail, you consortium flirt flapper. This move is either gonna kill both of you or all three of us. Get your tentacles in a twist. You're late. They said you were the best. They said you'd be late. I expected more from Dash Holbeck, hero of the Orb Wars. The Orb Wars are over. And the Space Sultan is dead. But what if I told you there's a fourth orb and a new Space Sultan is rising? It speaks somewhere more private. That's better. Are you telling me you dragged me halfway across the galaxy for a fairy tale? An orb finder? How is that even possible? I've been sent on this sacred quest by Queen Ilana herself. And I, Cathandra of the Lost Evenglow clan, have pledged with my dying breath to, to find this orb. <clears throat> Join us. Or not. But we head to the Kishtu jungles. Well, if you're heading to the Kishtu jungles, you're going to need the best Xeno Ranger in this parsec. We don't have time for and that. And I already found him. <laughs> Cash, hold back, you old son of a bitch. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you know, Ogren and I were the only two survivors of the Siege of Starhold. But 
but that was nothing compared to when we fell into a nest of razor worms. And then there was that close call. Two's good. We should probably get out of here. I'll explain on the way. Careful of that cliff's edge. It goes down a mile. I've survived this long without your help, thank you. Oh, no signal yet. The Temple of the King, Thibaut Tinishin, is somewhere here in this jungle. If this is such a vital mission to Queen Alana, it's kind of strange she would send such a small crew. The galaxy's at stake, Dash. If you can't take this seriously, then... Ah! Ah! Cassandra! <laughs> Never do that again. Sorry. Listen, I don't mean to challenge your leadership. I'm just an asshole. What's that down there? I think it's the gun. We're close to the temple. And the first of 12 keys that will lead us to the orb. Report your status. They've led me to the temple master. Be sure to kill them once you have it. That wasn't part of the deal. Don't make me use my dark magic against you. <laughs> Do my bidding or I shall kill your beloved sister. <laughs> yes, my master. <laughs> oh, I think you're muted. There we go. Uh, hey, that wasn't my fault this time. That was this <laughs> Oh, well, that was awesome. <laughs> that was funny. I it's just that it was really really good. That was that was great. Um uh so uh, so tell us about how you made this. Tell, tell us about, you know, tell us the process and how you right. came up with the idea and um, so how long it took that, to shoot. That was actually done for a 48 hour film competition. So we, we shot the whole thing wow. uh, in one day at a studio in Tempe, Arizona and um, edited the whole thing in one day. Um, so it was a really kind of a crush uh, turn around. Um, it, it, it had been an idea that I had been kicking around for, for a while, maybe about a, a year or two. Um, but it wasn't until the, the competition, um, uh, the almost famous, uh, 48 hour competition, uh, here in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, that we finally actually like pulled the trigger on it. So, um, with these, these competitions, you always are given certain criteria, you know, like at seven o'clock on Friday, you're given like a theme that you've got to incorporate, a line of dialogue, you've got to incorporate a prop, you've got to incorporate. Um, so we want to make sure that those things were all integrated into, into the story. Um, and uh, yeah, the, these, these, these competitions are a lot of fun, but they're <laughs> definitely nuts and stressful and will definitely strip like a year off of your life. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell it. Okay. So um, the, the competition was, when was the uh, comp competition? So you, um, and you show up to a, you show up to what a meeting or they release this. Online so, or? Yeah. So it, no, it's actually pretty cool. So, um, so the kickoff is usually at some sort of bar and you get to meet like all the different groups. It was actually, like a lot of groups, I, I there was like at least thirty or forty different groups all there for the competition, um, and then 
uh, we're all, it's all kind of like a, a little presentation and all the stuff is kind of, re all the criteria is revealed. Most of the people go scrambling now. Some people even brought their equipment with them. But, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. And then when the uh, the films are turned in, it's it's a very harsh deadline. You But now luckily it used to be that you had to run there in person to turn in like a USB or a, or a DVD or something like that. But now thanks to the, the internet, you know, you can just upload it to a, a, a Dropbox. Um, but when they actually show them, they show the top 20 in a movie theater. Oh, and wow. So, so the whole theater is packed. Um, there's there's audience voting. Um, it's it's kind of a big event. And it's and it's nice, you know, um, as a, I, I did, I guess I did my first one of these for real, like in 2007. And we don't do them every year. In fact, it's been maybe about five years since we've we've done one. But it definitely it, it, it's a great way to reconnect with the community and just to kind of force yourself to make something cool, you know. So but yeah, it, you it's one super stressful. <laughs> uh, we got first place. Wow, fantastic! <laughs> and At least first place comedy. We didn't get first place drama. Okay, uh, no, that's still that's still awesome. How many? Com how, how much competition was there? Um, it was pretty good competition. Um, I, I think total. I and I'm probably totally wrong with these numbers, but I think it was a total of about 30, uh, 40 to 30 teams that finally turned in their movies and they only screened the top 20. So they showed all 20 in about uh, an hour and a half hour, 50 minutes. Now, is there so, a time limit? Yeah, you can. It can only be about about five minutes. Um, our, you'll notice ours is like five minutes and 10 seconds. I kind of once it, the competition was done, I was able to kind of like make the credits longer than like two seconds. You ah. know? <laughs> oh, that, well, Added awesome. one joke. We, we, we need, we need, do, do you have laurels for it then? Oh, uh, I'm sure I do somewhere. I, well. you, you, have to, you, have to, you have to put the laurels on it. Absolutely. Exactly. Award winning. Cause you're legitimately award winning. The, uh, that, that, yeah, I should have put as my name, uh, award winning, Nathan Blackwell. Yeah. So uh, that, that's very cool. No, well, we'll have to do that. So uh, I will definitely load it up um, uh, later on tonight or this weekend to the actual oh, cool. album. That way we get, you get a wider release. I mean, I think it's, I think it's funny. It's worth five, it's five minutes that that's well worth it. And, oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, very, very good. Um, well, awesome. What, so what's, what's next in your, in your repertoire what do you, what do you right do? um yeah so these are definitely uh, challenging times um i i've been in the background working on um putting together a like a micro budget feature film to do um definitely with sci-fi elements definitely with some of the um collaborators that we've worked with in the past um I wish we could do a Voyage Trekkers feature film, <laughs> you know, just on our own. But uh, the having done that that half hour TV episode, just realizing the cost, and then and then also the production value that you've got to deliver. Um, I, I I for this feature, I wrote something that's a little more set in the normal world, but there's definitely kind of some fun sci-fi elements. Um, uh, and then, but now, I mean, that's basically the script's been ready, done for, for a couple of months. But now that we're in kind of in a time where we can't shoot things uh, easily, um, I've been uh, still trying to keep active uh, and, and creative. Um, and so I, me, and, me and some of my friends have actually been writing a scripted uh, radio play, like a, like a, a scripted podcast. Um, so it, we're, these are going to be like half hour episodes, 20, 30 minute episodes, probably a limited season of episodes. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've been working on that. So that's been a lot of fun. Very cool. Oh, very cool. Very, so what's happening? Yeah. So is, is the Arizona film scene, scene just on hiatus until. Like, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Um, there are some shoots like I have, a, I am actually shooting a, a commercial in a, about three weeks, um, but it, it's definitely some hurdles um, with the uh, with COVID and safety and everything like that. What we've been doing, we're basically shooting uh, like a barbecue 
uh, SaaS commercial. Um, and um, and so we, we have families in, in in the backyard having a barbecue. And so instead of normally what you do is a casting call and you'd, you'd, you'd cast each individual person, uh, instead we're basically kind of, we're casting the whole family of real, of a real family. Ah. And so they're interacting with themselves. They're in their own COVID bubble. Um, all the crew uh, has to obviously wear uh, masks and uh, you know, and just the the challenge of of the safety protocols. Basically, everyone needs to get a COVID test before the shoot. Um, also, um, that's what a lot of the um, other productions, larger productions, are kind of doing stuff that you can't do like a one man band where you're kind of forced to um, be together with about a dozen people uh, at at one location. It's um, yeah, it's definitely uh, challenging for sure. So that is, it, it absolutely is. I mean, these are difficult time, times and uh, not, you know, not obviously nothing here in Atlanta. And, you know, it's it's uh, I know they're talking about stuff, but it, it is certainly. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and Phoenix yeah. is no major hub of production. We we do a lot of corporate video. We do a lot of commercials, um, but uh, certainly not what Atlanta is up to. Yeah, well, and now I know because I, I, you know I I don't know about you, but I follow Hollywood trades, and we're really keen on what's happening and who's doing what and how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 really challenging trying to figure out what are the best practices um, in these uncertain times. Well, I yeah, and, and I, I know, and it's um, you know uh, it, it, it's difficult, but you, you have to. Uh, at some point, you just have to take a leap of faith that what you're doing is what needs to be done. Mm. You know, uh, there, there, there's so many ways you can cut this, but uh, at some point, you're going to go. We're going to take all the take all the the uh, precautions we need to, right? We're going to, you know, whatever that that may be. Whether mm -hmm. you know, we, I've, I've been reading. You know, I've read everything that's come out of Hollywood, all the guidelines and everything. Have a COVID officer, compliance officer, and you know, and we're doing all we're doing all of that um mm -hmm. uh, I, you just have to take all the precautions you can it's, yeah yeah which is which is why i would love to be shooting more short films right now but um uh, i'm just kind of leaning into doing the the radio series uh which has been a lot of fun we've already recorded one episode oh that's so, awesome yeah that's it's, cool. it's it's and it's something a little different but it's again very uh, i suppose squishy studios um, it's, it's, uh, again, using some of our previous collaborators, but, um, it's, it's about small town, two small town superheroes who decide to, to finally leave and make it for the big city and just have the worst time. So it's, a, it's basically, um, uh, a total comedy, uh, and it's a lot of fun and it's it's kind of like a superhero version of uh, flight of the concords have you ever seen that i have not seen it i, I certainly it's so, know it's, it's so good but yeah basically that these like two new zealand musicians uh, two new zealander musicians um you know trying to make it in new york and you know <laughs> no success at all and so it's kind of fun doing a a superhero version of the the underdogs in like a major established it, it's kind of like almost like actors going to la it's like that to where people have you know uh you know meetup groups and agents and like and and like um press and things like that and you're just at the bottom of the barrel just trying to scrape your way up looking for any kind of attention and so um it's it's kind of fun these these two guys who thought they were they were kind of kings of the hill in in Pueblo, Colorado, moving to Victory City, the giant superhero city where there's like enormous statues everywhere and superheroes flying by and and like supercars driving by and them just kind of like being so needy and desperate. So. <laughs> very cool, <laughs> very cool. Well, awesome. Any and, and um, you mentioned that you had done a Voice Trekkers uh, TV episode. Mm hmm. And yeah, so that, that was, was we that released after, that about a year ago. Was that after season two? Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, geez, uh, yeah. So we did um, season two, and then about two years later, we did um, uh, ten anti-smoking PSAs for the Arizona Department of Health, and then uh, about two years after that, we did the the uh, TV show. We did the TV episode. This, yeah, just a single half hour. 
Gotcha. Oh, okay. What did that cost you? Um, uh, it cost the, the the single half hour uh, cost ten thousand. All right, um, and that bad. was yeah, and um, it was uh pretty much all volunteers there were some people that we we paid because they were go, kind of going out of their way to help but it, it just it, but um and then we actually did try to actually let me correct that we didn't pay what their people what they were worth but we tried to give them a very you know small amount just to let them know um you know, that we were we were glad for their participation um even the actors who would be happy doing it for free we wanted to make sure that they got at least something so it, it was certainly not what they were worth but we tried to give them something um it was a five-day shoot i knew from having done season two that uh which was uh especially like the season two uh finale which was very like visual effects heavy that this would be more kind of an away mission episode you know so <laughs> we, we we wouldn't have to to bring the bridge set back, we wouldn't have to do a ton of of CGI effects. I love that for sure, but just looking at our budget, that was kind of the 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 realistic. This is more kind of like uh, them them uh, in a way mission stuck on the planet trying to figure out how to to get things back, <laughs> try to get back to the ship. Gotcha, got I gotcha. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I'd love to. I'd love to. We need to chat about you doing your 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 voice trekkers feature film. I mean, if you no. do a half hour for ten grand, you could. You know, what did you think the budget was going to be for a, a feature film? So, um, I, I, we did write a feature film version uh, with the idea that it would be um, a little more expensive than what we could raise. <laughs> but and so, if we did do kind of use that same idea of 10 grand for the TV episode, then then what could we do for a feature? We'd probably have to toss the script out and and start start over because there's definitely some kind of like Wrath of Khan homages where it's it's kind of two at the end it's kind of two ships battling each other. And that probably would be uh, a little just a little too rough on on that kind of budget. Um but yeah I I mean I would love I love I love doing Void Strikers. Um, uh, and, and any opportunity to kind of return to that world, I take it, but, uh, it, yeah, it's also fun to, to take on new things, uh, as well. So God, yeah, we, we need to figure out a way to get void truckers in, in over here in Atlanta and shoot on our sets. Ah, uh, I'd love that. <laughs> that would, that would be a lot of fun. We're, you know, we're, we I was just talking with our DP today about, our shoot and what we're, I mean, we've got some reshoots that we need to do, but it, and it's really interesting, you know, when we, when they, sh we shot um, last year in October, um, it was a three day shoot and we had, I had budgeted it um, around $50,000 and the guys went over by about $15,000. So it was over mm. budget by 30%. Um, uh, but now as we talk about it, um, w you know, especially COVID, COVID has gotten you to really think about what you can do with as little as possible. And we went through, you know, we went through the process and said, okay, so who do we really need on set? Mm -hmm. You know, if we're shooting with two cameras, who do we really, really need? You know, and um, so our, our DP and I chatted about this and we we're like, okay, well, you know, one camera's on a slider, one camera's on sticks. So, we don't really need a camera operator for the cameras on sticks. That's the DP can handle that. So we need a camera operator for the second camera. And we probably need an assistant camera operator since that one's the slider. That mm -hmm. I want to pull focus on that. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, that's good. so you have three right now. So then we need sound four and a gaffer. And the gaffer is going to have to handle just G and E as well. Right. You know, we're shooting on green screen. Or we're shooting in a studio. It's it's pretty static. There's there's no mm -hmm. it's there's single setups. We're like okay, so so basically that's that's basically five people that we which you know plus your talent, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then in the grand scheme of things, we need hair and makeup, which you know may or may not be the same person, but that's mm -hmm. over in another right. That's not on set. That's over over there, so you can at least isolate a little bit. Um, you know, and so we, we think we can do the next shoot with, you know, if you have five people plus talent is six hair 
let, let's assume hair and makeup is the same person, seven, um, myself as producer, my compliance officer, eight, nine, mm -hmm. 10 people, we're done and we're, and we're set. We don't have to have more than 10 people in the building. And that's not even on set. I don't yeah. need to be on set. Compliance officers, is that you get five people on set, six with the talent, four people, hair, makeup, and everything else. And, you know, we could shoot that. And now the beauty of that is you, you, because you're minimizing your risk to your to to everyone by the minimum number of people that, that are on the set. Mm -hmm. But the other beauty is you've driven your cost down ridiculously far. Yeah. B between the way we shoot and how many people we have on set, now we're shooting – now, you know, our one-day shoots can be, can be knocked out for – a few thousand rather than tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. So I think it's made us, COVID has made us a lot more responsible, a lot more frugal and a lot and smarter too. It's not a matter of being, mm -hmm. it's a matter of being smart um, with, with how you do things. Yeah. Yeah. It's always a trade off in terms of, of how, how big the machine is um, and how, how fast you move, but also like there's a certain aspect of, okay, this is the way it's done. We need all these different departments. We need to pull it off. And there is value to everyone who participates. Uh, but at the same time, sometimes you just got to get down and dirty and you got to get lean and mean. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. And I, and I, I've always taken the, uh, the, one of the things I've learned in terms of, of doing low, low budget when you have to is don't try to do this necessarily always the same thing that you're trying to do with the high budget and with that low budget, like work, you know, collaborate with your low budget and see what you can pull off really well for that. You know, like I would have loved like for the, the voyage checkers TV episode, I would have loved to have it wall to wall visual effects, but I knew that we would have been stretching our dollar and our time just too far. And so rather to lean into one of those, um, uh, uh, you know, away mission episodes towards a lot more people in people scenes. Um, uh, and then maybe even the strength of that is that maybe there's a little more character humor. Maybe there's a little more emotion going on. So, right, right, right. I, I, I got, yeah, no, I, 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 th I think so. You, you did basically, rejigger it and figure out how it's how it's going to be mm -hmm. yeah, yeah be done and so well, well cool well listen thanks for joining us we we yeah, really my pleasure uh, th this is great um we're, we're it, it was wonderful to see your new project we'll get it up on the action art channel so you get, <laughs> meet, get a much wider audience um oh. deservedly so and i know our people will love it and uh we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll circle back and and talk about how we can do things together uh, Sounds great. We def definitely, I uh, love what you're doing, and uh, I think there's a, a certainly a good need for. Uh, I mean, it's funny. Galaxy Quest was on last night, so mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it, it's certainly a need for uh, for that. So, um, all right, my friend. Cool. Take care. Good. Thank you, you, sir. Good, good see you too. We'll, we'll, oh wait, we'll, we'll, there it is. All right, there, there it is. There we go. Live long and prosper, <laughs> my friend. Live long right, and prosper. Take, Peace and long life. Yeah, indeed. Cheers. All right. Night, bud. Thanks. All right. So um, that is uh, that's Nathan Blackwell who does Voyage Trekkers. Voyage Trekkers is available on the XNR uh, YouTube page. So check it out there. Um, and it's worth it. Uh, we have season one up. I think we need to get season two, uh, which we will do. And then um, uh, let's see. I'm going to just change. Uh, there we go. All right. I don't know which camera you like better. This can, this shot's up. The other, sh the other shot is down. I need to maybe move. Let's see if I move. Let's see if I move the camera. Oh. Uh, yeah, the camera, that the built-in Mac camera, oops, isn't quite as good as, let's try that again. There we go. Much better, huh? I think that's a, I think that's the better that that is the better one. Um, so there you go. Um, so yeah. So we've got there's there's a lot going behind the scenes um, with Axonar and um, in between uh, our my move. Um, I probably know something, and then you know probably by the end of October, I know something about the the 
the job that I'm being recruited for. Um, one way or another, that it won't affect Axnar. The good news is today we moved um, Kelly Simpson, the daughter of Dale Simpson, our head of security, and XO on the USS Aries chapter of Starfleet. Um, his daughter, he volunteered his daughter. Well, he didn't volunteer. I'm paying her. Um, she's working for us about three days a week now. And uh, today she finished moving most of the stuff for the perk fulfillment area um, that's in our basement right now. So, um, which, is, which is good news. So we're pretty much, we're pretty close to being set up at the studio with everything. And she knows, uh, I've been training her on the ship station software. Um, so I'll have an extra person to ha help handle um, shipping and fulfillment. Now, and that's, which is great um, because we're, we're about to get, really get into the, uh, uh, fulfillment. We just shipped out all the mugs. If you were a Patreon donor, and please be a Patreon donor, that's really important. Um, there's nothing more important than a month of giving. If you're watching now, you know, and we hope you hope you are. Hopefully, you're a member of our Patreon campaign. You can give as little as two dollars a month, um, on up to a hundred dollars. We have people who give us a hundred dollars a month. Michael Weir, uh, Michael Sean Carter, I think. Um, these guys. It doesn't matter what you could do, but by being a paid subscriber, you help support the studio. So um, the good news is we've got a renter taking a thousand square feet of, because we don't use it, the entire studio, taking a thousand square feet. So we're real excited about that. Uh, that, that is going to bring us, we're probably going to be within $200 of breaking even between this, the Patreon campaign and the monthly rent we're going to get from uh, it's a, it's a, an equipment uh, construction equipment sale. So they're like, putting like cement mixers and stuff in our, our studio. we like tape out an area like that's your area. Stay in the, in the blue line. So uh, uh, we'll have to put hazard tape down. That's pretty cool. Anyway. Uh, so, that, so you guys support the studio and support all this stuff. So there you go. Um, uh, oh, let's see. MT got his cap today. Great. Uh, <laughs> good MT. We're glad you got you. We had a sale on Aries hats. Um, and then, uh, so anyway, all the Patreon donors got a free coffee mug. Uh, just pay for shipping and handling. Um, that's out. Um, next month probably we'll be offering all Patreon donors a free patch. I think that's the next thing. Cause we have so many patches. I want to make sure you guys all get it. Um, and, uh, and, um, and Kelly knows how to how to do everything now, how to ship everything else. So even if I'm not around, because I've got a couple trips. I've got to go to Las Vegas and I've got to go to LA. Both those trips are, um, and I may be driving. I don't know. I've got stuff to pick up, and we'll see. Um, but um, uh, Adam Vera, as a patron, a patron subscriber, and super chat champion of the world, are the mugs Etsy in them? take like four months or are they direct mail um no they're they're downstairs we've i've already shipped out all the mugs from the people who have paid for them the last week or so uh two weeks when we start this offer two weeks ago so uh they are all ready to go so you just go to airy studio store go to perk patreon perks and uh buy the shipping and handling charge that's it um with all these things we just like uh, with a lot of these giveaways the whole or the perks um, whether it's for Patreon, whether it's for our campaigns, we're like, pay the shipping. We don't have the money to pay for shipping, right? Um, and, uh, you know, CBS basically bankrupted us. So um, all we ask for is pay for the shipping. And fortunately, the studio has been able to, uh, you know, the st every studio store, which you guys um, have been fantastic about supporting, um, and you can see down there uh, the every studio store, um, uh, anyway, uh, let me, you know what, let's try that. Boom. Um, change it from a ticker. So if you go to every studio store, you can buy all sorts of cool swag and all of that money goes to the studio. So, um, that's, what's keeping the studio alive. Uh, and, um, it, it's, it's, it's really fantastic. So there you go. Um, go to the store, buy cool swag. Now we have the blueprints. Ooh, MSD posters and the way we're getting the studio set up, it's actually kind of cool because the, the, the fulfillment center is right in the center of the studio now, which is really cool. 
Um, but since all we're using is is the one set, it, it, things are working out well. The other thing is um, we've got some cool new consoles that we're going to be using that are amazing. Uh, Jeremy Burton said his mug came in today. That's fantastic, Jeremy. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, uh, Thank you, Karen B. We appreciate that. Um, so uh, there you go. Um, what else? Um, I don't know. Uh, what, what, what else is it? We got the fulfillment, the perk fulfillment. Um, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Obviously, we're moving. Um, so this this whole you can I'll, here, I'll show you the. You know, my office is a mess. It's all being all being boxed away. You can see boxes for everything. The shelves over there are empty. Um, I did get my back. Oh, whoa. help. Right. Sorry. It's like, what is going on? There's my kid. Sorry. Um, there, uh, that's what happens when you don't hire a professional cameraman. Um, I got my Batgirl statue in. It is awesome. Oh, my God. I love it so much. Uh, it is really fantastic. So, um, yeah. So it's great. Um, what else? Um, I think that's about it. I want to congratulate Lissa, who did her first dog transport, dog rescue transport today. Uh, she picked up for me uh, um, just because it was all everything was down by her down there in Fayetteville. So um, she picked up this uh, puppy. Um, want to tell us? Want to tell us about it, Lisa? Sure. So her name is Bella, and I'm not exactly sure what breed she is, but she. Is, I think she's got some pit in there based on yeah. her face. Um, but she was a really sweet dog. Um, I picked her up around 9:15 this morning. Um, brought her back to the house for a little bit. We sat down. I had my Starbucks and breakfast. Um, she cuddled on me and then decided to hide under the, the recliner. I took her with me to take dogs out and then drove her to the transport. And this is an important, people need to understand transport is, is an important part of dog rescue. And, um, and what it is, is, you know, you, the, the dog may come at, be in a shelter and you have to get the dog from the shelter to a foster home, from a shelter yep. to a rescue. And that whole piece is really important. That's all volunteers. Um, I do it for Tracy all the time. Um, and uh, I've done it for Amy Albrecht uh, as well. Those are the two rescues we work with. Um, Tracy, I'm, I'm actually going to start working with her on her Patreon campaign. Because she, okay. really yeah, she really needs the Patreon campaign. So we'll keep everyone posted about that. Um, so there you go. So um, congratulations on, on your... Um, I've been working, uh, been working on the uh, new patch for the uh, for Axonar Dog Rescue, um, and it's 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 cool because it says Axonar Dog Rescue, but it and then it says, um, what, uh, uh, Animal Rescue Emergency Support, Aries. So nice. um, yeah, so and that's what we do. We support dog rescues. We're not a dog rescue ourselves. We are support services. We raise money. We transport. We foster. Those are the things that uh, that we do. So, yep. Um, yep so all, all good. But uh, all right. Well, thanks, Lisa. We appreciate. I, I really appreciate you taking. You saved me a lot of time uh, by doing that, that because I would have had it dri driven down all the way from up here uh, uh, for that. So thank you so yeah, much. It, it was about thirty minutes away for me. So it was probably going to be like an hour and a half for you, ish. Yep. Yep. That, and that's yep. just the the one way. So you would have to either like find a place to be able to just chill down here with her, because they got mixed up on the times originally, and so I spent most of last night going, "All right, what the heck's going on?" <laughs> So I was on the phone with Alec while I'm also trying to, like, I was on a call on Discord, and Alec calls me as they're like, hey, the time got mixed up, and I'm like, oh, gosh, okay, what's going on? Well, yeah, I know, that was a, that was a major, that, and that was them screwing up. Um, well, um, and that actually worked out better for me because um, my, I went to help my grandfather today with his groceries and everything. 
And so I went from dropping Bella off straight to Douglasville. So I drove like 170 miles today. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's been one of those days, Alec. All right. Well, good. Thanks so much. We appreciate all your help. Lisa does a great job and, and, and helped us out a ton. So uh, much thanks to her. Um, oh, yeah, I, I, I know. I, I, he's talking about, yeah, Rob Burnett put out films about uh, acts that are films never to be made. Well, okay. Um, I wish he would just shut up. <laughs> but, the, you know, uh, for someone who stole so much money and equipment from donors, uh, he has a lot of nerve uh, actually talking about Axnar anymore. Um, uh, but uh, I see you're talking about it in the comments. But anyway, there, uh, it's a funny way, the funny thing, the way karma comes around. Um, but that's about it for now. We're going to call it uh, a little early tonight. Um, I want to thank Nathan Blackwell for joining us. He's amazing. And uh, Voyage Trekkers, please watch it on the Axnar YouTube channel. Uh, let me just go uh, and see. Uh, how, uh, how we're doing on, um, we also posted, uh, where did we post that? So, yep, he, uh, the Voyage Trekker season one is on our site. Um, you can go check that out. Um, and then we did, what, where did we post? Um, what did we post the other day? The, um, oh, the, uh, uh, oh, that's on Jeff's site. We haven't posted it yet on our site is the decommissioning video, which we will get up, which is a camera test. But we will, as a matter of fact, let me see. Um, uh, why don't we end with that? Um, don't have it. Let's see how he's done with it. Um, oh, he's got 3,000 views on it. So um, let's, uh, let's watch that before we go. Oh, thank you, Adam Vera. We appreciate Adam Vetter as his super chat. Thank you so much, sir. Um, and we're going to uh, – let me share this. And uh, let's watch this. This is a red, This is the Red Komodo test, uh, camera test. And, and Jeff turned it into like a little video. Um, it was basically a camera test to see how this new camera was going to do. So uh, let me share it with you guys. And uh, – uh, I did.
right, there you go. There's the, the camera test for the camera we're going to be using on the rest of Axonar. So um, uh, let's. Uh, so there you go. Um, uh, someone's saying the link to the uh, the link to the mug purchase is broken, huh? Let's check that out. Um, if you're a Patreon donor, let me find that uh, perk fulfillment Patreon. Well, there's the link. Uh, okay. Did you put it in the, this? Uh, yeah, there you go. There is the link directly to the site. I mean, you can just go and go to per Patreon Perk Fulfillment, but I just put it in there. Um, so there you go. Um, all right. Well, listen. Thank, uh, thank you, everyone. Um, we, we appreciate your time, and we appreciate uh, your loyalty and patience as, as we muddle through this. But uh, we're, things are looking good, and we're, I, things are looking good. We're pretty excited. I, I, I think we'll, we'll have some announcements over the next couple of weeks, but Jeff and I talk every day, and uh, we're, I, as things filter down, they come to a point where the, we, we may finally make good decisions, and I, I think we're – um, we're getting rid of the uh, separating the wheat from the chaff, as the saying goes. So stay tuned. We'll see you next week. I have no idea what we're doing on XR Confidential next week. Tomorrow night is uh, Starfleet Tactical. And then Sunday night is Two Geek Girls, which is um, moving to Sunday. So uh, tomorrow night, 10 o'clock, Starfleet Tactical. Sunday night, uh, 9.30 is Two Geek Girls. All right? Um, XR Confidential will return on Monday. And um, we're still trying to figure out what to do with Tuesdays. But basically, you're going to get action on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and Starfleet Tactical uh, Saturdays, Two Geek Girls on Thursdays and Sundays. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you so much. We'll see you at Starfleet Tactical. Um, thank you so much, Jason. We will stay safe. We'll see you uh, tomorrow, hopefully, for Starfleet Tactical. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, as always, wear your damn mask. Cheers. <laughs>